This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineer Training Program. And as part of this training program, we are talking about basics of Python. Yesterday, we started with our first program and we talked about few uh, basic concepts like variables, creating a function with non-parameterized function or parameterized function. Today we'll be talking about many more uh, concepts. So let's start the class. So the agenda for today's class is break and continue statements in the for loop. We'll talk about while loop. We'll talk about if else condition and logical operators. What is an array and how to use multi-dimensional array. We'll talk about string functions and we'll also talk about dictionary concept in python so all these things we'll be exploring practically let me open my cloud 9 first of all let me log in into my aws account <coughs> and we'll be opening our cloud 9 So let it start. <clears throat> so uh, yesterday we talked about for loop where you can repeat something multiple times and there are different type of for loop like one for loop where you are aware about the limit like you want to repeat something five times ten times then you can go with the range. Another way of for loop is that you are not aware how many times you want to repeat but that depends upon some other thing like there is a list and that has some element and it should repeat for every element. So depending upon the number of element in that list, your for loop should repeat. But sometimes you do not want to complete the list because suppose you are looking for something. We will we'll talk about this example which we did yesterday. So suppose we have a list of names where we have few names displayed here as you can see. And out of these names, you are looking for a particular, particular uh, name. And as soon as you will find that name, you don't need to search it further. Right. For example, in a room, there are like, I would say there are uh, 10, 10, uh, you can say uh, books, books rack, rack, right. And you are looking for a particular book. So you will start searching in the first rack. Then if you will not find, you will go to the second rack. But as soon as you will find the book, then you don't need to search it further. Right. Out of 10, suppose you find your book in the fourth rack then fifth rack onwards you don't need to search so in some cases we do not want to complete that repeating there should be some condition that as soon as that condition is met then i don't want to uh, go further i want to come out of the for loop so for that one we have the concept of continue and break so you can see that line number 14 there is a for loop where i am doing for given name in names print given name Basically, I am just printing the names from this list. Okay. So, let's do one thing. Let me add some condition here. I would say if even name is equal to when we are comparing in the programming language, right? We use double time equal to. When you are assigning something like name is equal to zero, when you are assigning the value to a variable, that time single is equal to sign is used. But when you are comparing the equal comparison operator, then you have to use two times. So given name is equal to is equal to suppose I would say Ankit. In that case, I would like to 
break and i would display this one before my if condition here okay. now what it will do is it will start from the first element like kirti then it will check the given name kirti is equal to ankit no this condition is not true so it will again come to the for loop second time it will check ankit and that is matching with my condition and it will break that means now i do not want to continue so the remaining two names shravani and shushma these two name will not be displayed let's try to run this i first of all will go to my folder python code okay and what's the name of my file sample.py so we'll execute this file python and then your python file name enter and you can see this there's a for loop line number eight and nine which is displaying some number multiplied by 10 so 10 12 uh, sorry 20 30 40 that is coming we can remove that to keep it simple that for loop is no longer required we'll delete that okay and after that you can see that kirti and ankit only two names are displayed because as soon as we got the ankit from the list we met this condition and then we break break means you will come out of the for loop immediately but sometime there is a, another scenario that i want to skip only that particular element i don't want to break i don't want to come out of the for loop but only for that particular element i want to skip and for remaining i want to continue for the remaining items also i want to continue you can say that exceptional case you can say so what i will do is if given name is equal to ankit then instead of break i would say continue and this time i will add one more print line i will print something just to understand after displaying the name okay i am just displaying something so first time when the given name is kirti right then this this condition is false so it will proceed further and it will display this one after displaying the name then second time when the given name is ankit and this condition is met it is saying continue continue means whatever is the remaining part of the for loop just skip that but again go to for loop it will not break the for loop it will not come out of the for loop but only for that scenario it will skip Let's try to run this. You will understand what I am, what I want to convey. So we'll run this Python code again, and you can see this one. First name is displayed Kirti, and then after displaying the name, right? Then when the given name is Ankit, it will display the given name. So it it displayed Ankit. But you notice one thing after Ankit, this after displaying the name, that is not displayed because only for that time. It skipped the remaining part of the for loop, but only for that run. It will still go for the next element from the list. So it will go for Shravani, you can see here. And then the next message after displaying the name. And finally for Shushma, and it's saying after displaying the name. Only for that particular condition, it is not displaying this line that you can see here. So that is a concept of break and continue. If you want to break the entire for loop, then you can use break if you want to skip only for that particular element and you still want to continue in that case you will use the continue keyword so any doubt on this uh, break and continue concept otherwise we'll be moving to the next slide Okay, let's move to the next one. The next one is <coughs> while loop. For loop, we are know we know like how how many times it will repeat, whether it's a direct value like five times or depends upon the number of elements in an array in a list. But sometimes, based upon some condition, 
we want to repeat something so in that case we use the while loop so i will explain the while loop concept so first of all let me remove all these thing i will remove the entire for loop and we'll go with while loop okay so suppose i will declare one variable counter is equal to one after that, I put a condition while counter is less than 10. Okay. While counter is less than 10, then what I will do? I will print something. Print and anything you want to display. Hello. And you may be display, you may be changing the counter value. Otherwise, what will happen is it will go into infinite loop. Because while the first condition is true, counter value is 1, which is less than 10, and you will display hello. After that, it will come again. While counter is less than 10, yes, the condition is still true. Because the value of counter is still 1. And it will again display hello. So it will keep on printing hello continuously, infinitely. And it will never stop. So what I will do is I will put some condition so that the value of counter is changing. So what I will do is counter is equal to counter plus 3. Okay. So first time the value of counter is 1 and condition is true, it will display hello. Then the value of counter will become 1 plus 3, that is 4. And it will come here. 4 less than 10. Yes, that's correct. It will again display. Then the new value of counter would be 4 plus 3. That is 7. And the condition is still true. But once the value become 7 plus 3, 10. And when the condition will be false. Because 10 is not less than 10. Condition is false now. This time it will not go inside my while loop. That means in the beginning we don't know how many times this should be repeated. But this is based on some condition. As soon as, as long as the condition is true, it will keep on repeating. And as soon as the condition become false, it will stop. Okay. So, if you want, you can do one thing. Along with hello, let's display the number also, counter value. So, I will put into the string because it's a numerical value, right? So, I will display counter so that you will understand like what exactly is happening. So, we'll run our Python program and you can see that. First time hello 1, second time hello 4, third time hello 7 and that's all. It repeated only 3 times. Fourth time the value of counter will become 10 and that is not less than 10. That's equal to 10 right but not less than. So condition is false. If you can make it less than equal to that will make a difference. This time it will run 4 times because when the value of counter become 10 then counter that means 10 less than equal to 10 yes condition is true so it will display one more time but after that the counter value will become 10 plus 3 that is, that is 13 and 13 less than equal to 10 no this time condition is false let's try to run this it will just add one more entry hello 10 let's do that you can see now this time my while loop is repeating four times so it all depends upon your uh, condition. And if you comment this line, line number 15, suppose you are not changing the value of counter. In that case, it will keep on repeating. Let's try that. Let me clear my screen first. And then we'll try like this. You can see now. It's continuously printing. It's not stopping. It's continuously printing. You can see that. So in order to break it, you can press Ctrl C and that will break. You can see that keyboard interrupt because this process has been interrupted from the keyboard by pressing Ctrl C. Otherwise, this program will never finish because the value of counter will always less than 10. The condition will be always true and it will keep on displaying this hello one. So whenever you are doing the coding in such a way, whenever you are putting a while loop, you should be very careful that there should be some scenario, some condition which will complete your while loop. Otherwise, it will never complete. Okay. 
so this one is about while loop any question on this uh, the next one is if else condition so if condition we have already seen right i put some condition but i can show you if else so suppose name is equal to nearest right so you put a condition if name is equal to is equal to sandeep then print yes okay else else print no so what should be printed in this case because the name value is not sandeep right the condition is false so it will go into else no. condition and it will display no so if we try this what happened okay let me control c again and let me remove this we'll remove the entire while You can see that it's displaying no sometime in the else section right you can have further condition so if name is equal to sandeep then print yes after that you can do l if in l if you can provide another condition you can say is is equal to is equal to is do we have is variable we do not have we'll put is is equal to 28 okay so if a is equal to is equal to 28 then print super. otherwise you can put else other conditions also or otherwise if it's a last condition then you can simply put else and will print no Now there are two conditions. First condition is if name is equal to Sandeep, then do this. If not, then another condition. If age is equal to 28, then do this. And even if that condition is not true, then print no. In this case, it will display super. Because this condition is false and this condition is true. So we'll run this and you can see that it's displaying super. And in case, suppose this second condition is also false. Let me change it. Let's make it 26. Okay. In this case, first condition is false. Second condition is also false. It will directly go into the last one and it will display no. So run this and you can see that no. Okay. So this way, as per your requirement, usually suppose you want to define some uh, rate of interest for a particular customer. And the rate of interest depends on many things. What is the age of that customer or uh, which area he belongs to or how many years the customer is belong to the bank or there can be many more conditions, right? Depending upon all those conditions, you will be defining the rate of interest. In that case, you can have multiple if and multiple L if conditions. And sometimes you can have multiple uh, conditions within, within the same if. For example, I would say if name is equal to is equal to Sandeep and age is equal to 28. I am combining the condition because for qualifying something you have two conditions. Suppose you should have age below, uh, below 40. That's one condition. And the marks in your, uh, in your school time should be above 80. Something like that, right? So, there can be two conditions and once you will fulfill both the conditions, then only you will be qualified. So in this case, if name is equal to Sandeep and age is equal to 28, then it will display yes. Otherwise, it will display no. Okay. So let me make at least one condition true. I will make it 26. And now we'll try to run it. You can see that it is still displaying no. Why? Because there is an AND operator. AND means both conditions should be true. 
name should be sandeep and age should be 26 then only it will display yes otherwise it will display no but in our case this condition is false and the second condition is true so ultimately it will come to the else part if you will make it or instead of and right you can use or operator that means either this condition is true or this condition is true or even both conditions are true in that case it will come to this section and if none of the condition is true then it will go in the else section so in this case at least the second condition is true right so it should display yes so let me save the program and we'll run it and it should display yes you can see that like this So you can combine multiple conditions also as i was giving an example right you you are defining some rate of interest you are defining the eligibility criteria and the eligibility criteria can be there can be few things mandatory and there can be few things optional so you can put all these conditions here okay so any doubt till now till this slide you can ask me otherwise we'll be proceeding the next topic okay the next one we have is array array is a collection of similar type of elements yesterday i declared one uh, array that was containing the different names right so you cannot mix the data type in the array that's one condition you cannot have like one is integer and another one is text and third one is boolean and another one is decimal you cannot do that array is a collection of similar type of elements either you can have all numbers or all decimals or all text that you can do and you can play around that array you can do different things to that array so let's try that i will be declaring one array let me remove this if else and we already have one array you can see that names right if you want to add some more element to that so you can do names dot append we have a append function and you can add more names so i would add my name okay and after that i will print print and you will try names directly i think it will not work the reason being is only the string can be printed but because the type of name is not string it's an array of string so i think it will give some error we'll we'll check that out okay so let's try to run it's printing yeah that's working as expected you can see that so you can append as many more elements and it's not only about appending you can do many more things you can sort it sort it based upon the alphabetical order so you will do names dot sort okay that's all this time okay let's do one thing let's print the names two times control c so and let's do here also you will understand everything so i declared one array which has four elements and I, I'm printing it. After that, I'm adding one more element and again, I'm printing it. Then I'm sorting it and then again, I'm printing it. So you will see the difference. So let's run this and you can see here. First time displayed four elements in the array. Second time added one more element. So total five elements. And third one is a sorted array. Starting with Ankit, A, then k then n then s and then and i think there is some function to reverse also names dot reverse yes it will reverse your order so i will put this okay let's try to run it now and you can see that the third one is sorted one because it's starting with a and ending towards s and the last one is the opposite the reverse of the sorted one 
So starting with Sushma, then Savani, Neeraj, Kirti, Amit. There are many more functions. Inbuilt functions in Python. We don't have to think about their logic, like how it's appending, how it's sorting, how it's reversing. There are many functions available and as and when required, you can use them. Let me see if there is any other function. Names dot. You can press control space that will display like different functions available. There is a append function. There is a clear function. It will remove. You can see the description on the right side. It will remove all the elements. It will not delete your array, but it will make your array empty. There is a copy also. So if you want to create a copy of that array, there is a count. If you want to see how many uh, elements are there, there is an extend also. Extend list by appending elements from the iterable. Okay. If you want to add one list to another list, then you can use extend. And there are many functions. Pop, remove, reverse, sort. Yeah, you can use all these functions. Okay. So this is about one dimensional array. You can even have multi-dimensional array. So let me give an example. I would say marks or marks. Okay. So what I'm doing is square bracket and then inside that another square bracket because this is multi-dimensional array here i will put suppose name name is neeraj and then the second element i'm just thinking how to do that okay maybe what you can do is you can see like the details are let me make it number first because we are talking about marks detail right so i will say 23 56 then 78 that is my first array Let's see Puma and then this basically you can see that the first three numbers are for a first student and then the next three are for the second student so it's a two dimensional array you can think from a like table perspective so we have rows and columns and not only two dimensional we we may have multi dimensional array three dimensional four dimensional as and when you require so let me change the value here i will make it 53 and 58 and 98 okay now there are two dimensional array okay how to access that in order to access, suppose you want to find the marks of second student in the third subject. This one. So answer should be 98, right? How to do that? So you can print and you display the array name, control C. <laughs> okay. And then in the bracket, you will provide the index. So array always starts the counting from zero. Zero means first element. So this this these three numbers is the zero and these three are the one so i would say one that means second row and from second row i want third column so i will put here two two means third because it starts from zero then one then two so i am saying okay this this one should be zero not one okay one so mark detail square bracket one square bracket two one means second row and two means third column so basically it should return 98 but since that is a number we should put str otherwise it will not work so i will close like this control s and it should display 98 what is the mistake names dot line number 26 okay this one let me remove all these things whatever we did right i will remove all this stuff to keep it simple to understand 
Okay, I'm removing everything and clear my screen and then open it. You can see that 98. Okay, so array is index based. That means which element you want to access, you can specify the number and it will display it accordingly. If you want to understand in more simple way, I can show you in the names because that was one dimensional array, right? Suppose I want to display the name Ankit. What should I do? I should do print name, name, print names and then in the square one. bracket, what number I should pass? One. One. You are right. Because it starts from zero. Zero means at zeroth index, the name is Kirti. At one index, the name is Ankit. And two, Shravani and on three, Shushma is there, right? So when I'm passing one, it should display Ankit. So let's try that. Control S and we'll run this and you can see that. Displaying Ankit and 98. Okay. Let's try something else. Let's try to display 56. So 56 means first row and second column. First row zero. means 0 and second column means 1. Yeah. Okay. So it should display 56. S and we'll run it again and you can see that this is two dimensional array and you can even have three dimensional array but you have to visualize that just like a cube you can understand and there will be three different layers one is row one is column and then even that that will be repeated like so there can be multi-dimensional array also so any question on the array you can ask me Otherwise, we'll move to the next section. Two-dimensional array we talked about. String functions. Okay, we'll talk about string function also. So, I'm coming back. So, just like we applied a few things on the array, like we reversed it, we sorted it, we appended the new element. Similarly, on string, you can do a lot of things. So let me do something. I would say after nearest, I will take one more string. Details is equal to is then is plus four twenty six. Then my designation you can say my company name something like this okay so this is my string and it has many details i have separated with help of colon now what you can do with these details you can do a lot of things first of all we can print that so let me remove everything else okay we'll remove everything else and first of all i will print this so i will print details it will print as it is You can see that it is 26 AWS architect TCS as it is right now suppose I want to display the length of this string I don't know how many characters are there so what I can do is <coughs> I can do print and I would say length whatever I am displaying in single quotes that will be printed as it is and then there is a function len length and pass your string that is details and since it will give a number and it will complain so i will make convert that into string what it will do it should display the length of my string Let's try that you can see that 27 all these number of characters are 27 okay and let's try doing something else so there's a function like uh, l strip l strip is basically removing the spaces from left side let me give some spaces here control s okay and now i will run this and you can see this one before nearest, there is a lot of space. Sometimes when you are getting raw data from something, suppose you are getting the data from your clients or they are 
publishing their data into S3 or there can be any other data source. You may have to do some basic type of cleansing. The very basic cleansing is you may have additional space in the beginning or in the end. Middle is fine. You may not able to, I mean, you may not be interested to remove that. Like in this case, there is space between AWS and architect. That space is required, right? But any space before the first character does not make any sense. And similarly, there can be some space at the end also, even that is not making any sense. And that may cause some problem. Because suppose one name is coming from one place where the name is space and then nearest. And from other source, the name is coming as correctly nearest without any space. When you will compare these two string, it will say it's not same. Because one has additional space. But ultimately, that should be considered as same only. So that will happen only when you will clean your data. You have to remove your additional spaces. You may have to convert that into a particular case because you may find nearest in small case and you find it in capital case somewhere else. And when you will compare, it will again say it's not same. So to make your things working, you make your project working in proper way. You may have to do a lot of cleansing over there. Okay. So let me run it again. And you can see now some space is displayed in the beginning and there is some space in the end also you can see here so there's a function that will remove the space and you can do print there's a function l strip l strip means left strip it will remove the space from left side i am doing this okay control s and let's try that l strip is not defined really or maybe we have to do details dot l strip let me quickly check and yes right yeah syntax error so instead of providing strip here l strip you have to provide your string name variable name details dot l strip like this and at the same time, we'll try with R strip, that is right strip. And at the same time, we'll try with simple strip that will remove the space from left and right both. Okay, and let me do something here so that we can understand what's happening here. First one is L strip, then second is R strip, and third one, third one is simple strip. Okay, let's see the magic what it will do. So I will clear my screen and I will run this Python code. And you can see this one. L strip is removing the space from the left side. There is no space now. It's coming very, but you can see that there is space on the right side. The next one R strip. It's removing the space from the right side. If you will try to select right, you can see that there is no additional space on the right side. But yes, the left one is still there. You can see left one is still pending. And if you use strip that will remove from both sides, you can see that there is no space before and after your string like this. OK, so these are only two. Uh, I mean, few functions I have explained. L strip and R strip. You can try many more things. Let me try that. Details dot control space. Capitalize. You can see that. Capitalize means it will convert your entire string into capital. Let's try that. Okay. And then I will print. Print details. Didn't read okay. Maybe I need to control X. Control S. I 
it, it converted into lower case because AWS was capital, TCS was capital, it converted into lower case. Why? We did capitalize, right? Let me read what is that. From the name it indicates it should convert into capital. Details dot lies. Return a capitalized version of the string. More specifically, make the first character have uppercase and the rest lowercase. Really? No, it's not doing that. Case fold. What is case fold? Suitable for case less comparison. Or we may have something like upper. Yes, upper is there. Yes. This will be converting into uppercase. So I will this one and this. Okay. And let's try to run this. <coughs> You can see now it's converting the entire string into capital okay so there are many functions you can use as per your need and one more thing is there you can even split that string into multiple smaller strings that's why intentionally i put that semicolon in between sorry the colon in between because i would like to split my string based upon that colon so how to do that first of all let me remove all these additional spaces to keep it easy to understand and I will remove all these upper lower everything. Okay. Now I would like to convert this string. This is single string, right? Single string, right? I would like to convert this into an array and you know array has multiple elements. So I want that this string should be separated based upon colon and after splitting <coughs> there can be one two three four four elements right those four elements should be going into one of the array so you can give some array name i would say details underscore array is equal to details dot split as a function split and you have to provide the splitter like based upon what you want to split i would like to split based upon colon Okay, and after that, you can try printing this array. It should display four elements separately. Okay. Let's try this. You can see now, mirrors 26, AWS architect and TCS. These four elements are coming in an array. And you can perform all the array operation. You want to append something, you want to delete something, you want to sort it you want to reverse it everything you can do so now that string has been separated and converted into an array and you can perform all the array related operations okay so that's all about uh playing uh, with strings as per the requirement of the project in case you are having any doubt till this point you can ask me otherwise we'll be going to the next one Okay, the next topic we have is dictionary. Dictionary is nothing but a collection of key value pairs. Sometime array is a collection of similar item, but there is no key value concept. But dictionary on the other hand has a key value concept. So let me do that. I will remove all this thing. And we will declare some dictionary. I would say give the same name. Details is equal to, let me remove this line. Details is equal to then curly bracket. That's the difference. If you are using square bracket, that means array. If you are using curly bracket, that means it is an dictionary. So in the dictionary, you will provide key value, well, key value things, right? So suppose I am giving name and then colon, then the value. So then comma. So to provide the next one. So I will give is 
and then if you want to keep it numeric you can put like this and then i would say okay yes okay so when you are declaring the dictionary you have to provide key and value both but when you will retrieve from it right when you will retrieve the value from this then you can just provide your key so suppose i want to print and i would say details in the square bracket so when we were accessing the detail from array we were passing the index 0 1 2 3 in this case it's not index based it is key based so you have to provide the key like which detail you want to get so i would like to get company name right and that's all let's try to run it and you can see that i am passing the key and it, it is returning the value you can see the pcs if you want to add more details right suppose in the beginning you declared a few things but later on you want to add more detail you can do that so how to do this one square bracket the new key suppose designation okay is equal to some value architect so this value will be added to the details three values along with one more value one more key value pair basically if you want to retrieve that you can try that print and then details in the square bracket you will pass the key and it will return you the value so you can declare some details in the beginning or you can add the details later on and you can retrieve them as and when required this is very useful when you are reading the details from some uh, other other sources like rest apis suppose you want to get the detail of a railway pnr ticket so you will call some rest api and then they will give you the detail in this format like the pnr number is this current status is this booking status is this booking date is this and journey on this one there can be a lot of details and out of those details whichever you would like to retrieve whichever you want to display that you can use so the dictionary is very common uh, i can say uh, element data element in python and you whenever you will work on any project you definitely come across the scenario where you are dealing with the dictionaries okay so that's all about dictionary and i think with that slide we are done for the day so if you are having any doubt in today's class topics we have talked about a lot of things we started with like for loop then we talked about uh, break continue while loop if else condition logical operators single dimensional array multi-dimensional array dictionary string functions array functions we have done a lot of things so any question on anything or you would like to add something you're most welcome sir uh, do we need to mention everything here like details this name and all if you want to add more things we can you can add any, in, any detail you can i so have do we need to do this way only or there is like runtime you can you know provide runtime also you can do you can declare as a blank array i would say my details is equal to that's all this is empty dictionary it has no detail mm -hmm. later on you can add the details as and when needed needed Similarly, array also you can declare uh, blank names is equal to square bracket. So this is a blank array. Later on, you keep on appending to this one and it will keep on adding. If you know something in advance, you can add that at the time of declaring or you can add it later on whenever required. Similarly, we declared some variable, right? So you can declare in the beginning like name is equal to blank. You can do like this. Later on, mm -hmm. suppose you will read the name from the database and then only you will come to know what is the name. Maybe you just know the employee ID. Then you will create a connection to the database and based upon that employee ID, you will retrieve all other detail. 
whether it's name or age or company or manager or department name every detail you will fetch from database so in the beginning you don't know what is the value of the name so you can declare as like a blank and later on you can put the value so this way you can declare the dictionary this way you can declare the array this way you can declare the like simple variable and later on when you have the details available you can assign the values does that answer your question yes okay that's good any other doubt from anyone else i was just thinking sir if more details need to be added so every time like uh, you know like we have to write all the names let us because you have written name equal to nearest right a is this and we want to add more name more age like uh, like you know age and then company then other name so do we need in, to write in that, name? yeah in that case you have to take some take some array also because mm -hmm. when you are talking similar type of elements mm -hmm. that means you would need an array so what you can in dictionary also we can have array i will show you so i would say class one okay. this is my key and in the value column value is an array so i would say like this okay I put it here to keep it simple it can have multiple nested key value pair also you can see that so, so array is declared always as a square bracket so class one class one is a an array and whatever is in the sing this uh, this one uh, curly brackets that is one one element name is nearest age 28 company disease now let's put comma and we'll exactly put one more element like this okay We'll change the name. Okay. okay. And let's close this square bracket. That means my array is finished. And one more curly bracket. It should be in sync. So class one is the key, and the key is pointing to an array. And the array has multiple elements. And further, every element has again key value pairs. Mm -hmm. Right. So now suppose you want to retrieve. Let's talk about uh, this TCS, right? That means first of all, you have to pass class yes. one. So I would say detail class one. Class one will give you an array. And the mm -hmm. array has two items. Mm -hmm. One is this mm -hmm. one. One is for nearest. One is for Ankit. So mm -hmm. I will put one more square bracket and I would say zero. That mm -hmm. would give me the first element. Let's first try to print. Eight. Let's try to print that one only. Then further we will go deeper. So I will do like this. Some Let's error is there. Details. Invalid syntax. Details. Okay, spell. 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 Invalid syntax. Where is the invalid syntax? This is array, and then there is an okay. This thing single quote is missing from here. That was causing problem here. Similarly from here. Yes, correct. So I again. Mm. You can see now Good. so i was saying class one and then from the array i want the first element and from this one if you need further then what we will mm -hmm. do is we will zero. Come. not zero because this is uh not index based we have to provide something like is i want is so i would say is you can see that 28. Mm -hmm. you can have deeper and deeper like that okay sir. Okay, so that's all for today. Tomorrow we'll be starting with 
pi spark that means we'll be talking more advanced level of python where we will be reading some file and we will be applying different operation on that file just like database we can select something from the file and we can do some operation we want to find some min max average there will be a lot of things which we will be doing tomorrow and day after tomorrow so that's all for today okay sir sir can you please check